What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here with some more StarCraft 2 commentary and this is going to be my first ever Heart of the Swarm beta commentary between Columbus and Destiny, a Terran versus Zerg matchup here on the map Fractured Glacier. Uh, Destiny spawning in our lower right hand spawn position is of course the very well known bad mannered Zerg streamer. <laughs> Every time I've ever seen his stream, he's like been trolling someone, but you know what, that's cool. I guess if that's how he likes to spend his time, then so be it. His opponent over here in the upper left-hand spawn position is Columbus, our blue Terran player. Uh, Columbus is a high Masters player. He also said that he was temporarily rank 1 Grandmaster in the Heart of the Swarm beta. I don't know how true that is, but nevertheless, this should be an exciting game. I am looking forward to it. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to rag on Destiny. He's more uh, known for more than just being a troll. I think he did lessons for a while and stuff as well. I know that he's uh, obviously a pretty big name in the StarCraft II community. I just, I, every time I've seen his stream, he's just kind of been being a D-bag, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, he's still, still a good StarCraft II player, certainly much better than I am, so more power to him. All right, so again, we are on the map Fractured Glacier, and since uh, you know StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm expansion is going to be new to a lot of people, even huge StarCraft II fans, I want to show off a few of these things. So let's start off by taking a look around the uh, main base here. I'm going to start off from Columbus's perspective. Of course, everything is mirrored, as is always the case uh, in StarCraft II maps, so Destiny's base is going to look the same pretty much just in reverse. So that is the main base moving out over here into the natural expansion now when it comes to entrance to the natural expansion we've got these rocks here and these rocks are actually a pretty interesting collapsible rock tower uh, the way that these worked from how I remember is that this is actually underneath this is a uh, it's basically a wall that you can't get past but what happens is you can destroy this half and it's going to cause the rocks to fall and form a full blockade so you can actually get a full wall off by destroying these rocks and there will be an impenetrable a slate of rock right beneath it plus some destroyable rocks right here we'll see if either player decides to utilize that at any point in this game but it is the case on both sides and you can see actually both players now scouting out we've got Columbus checking the upper right uh, Destiny with his overlord scout has checked the lower left he is now checking up right with this overlord scout as well so we'll see uh, who gets to scout the opponent first. It looks like Destiny uh, should be finding Columbus fairly shortly. The Overlord, of course, is a bit slow, though. Another thing, too, again, with this being Heart of the Swarm and uh, new units being in place, I'm going to take some time to take a look at those new units whenever players do produce them in these commentaries. So we'll see if either player decides to build some of those new units, and we can take some time looking at them in depth and discussing them. That's going to take away a little bit from the minute-to-minute -minute action of the, uh, of the replay itself, but... I, th I still think it's important. It's a brand new expansion. People want to know what's going on with the new units. And uh, also keep in mind that since we are in the beta, things are subject to change before release. I guarantee you there are going to be quite a few changes before the game actually releases, uh, hopefully by the end of this year. Let's take a look at what's going on over here. we got a couple of Marines making their way across the map. Uh, just one barracks. We do have a one racks expand out of Columbus. Also switching into heavy gas right here. It's got two refineries up and saturated. Back over here for Destiny. Destiny sitting with no gas at the moment. He's got his expansion up. He's droning up and getting some queens right now. And that's going to be his main focus. Two queens already in play with two more now in production. And uh, now we do have these few Marines making their way over to Destiny's base right now. Although with the queens in play, I'm not sure how much damage he's going to be able to do here. Let's Let's take a look. We got an SCV coming with him as well. Getting a couple shots off and then deciding to pull back. And looks like the Marines and SCVs will all be pulling back together. Uh, Orbital Command coming through over here for Columbus at that natural expansion. Also now making his way up into some factory tech and coming out with another expansion. So Columbus getting a quick third here. With this, he will be able to heavily saturate that natural expansion and main, and then once those are both fully saturated, expect him to move out after the fact, after he's accumulated a little bit of an army, and then has, of course, this is going to be an orbital command, most likely, he'll be placing it right down over here. Overlord Scout now moving in for Destiny, is scouting out that expansion, um, going to be pretty close to losing this Overlord, which would be a issue, he's going to lose it. A few more Marines coming to make sure they finish that off and see you later. Overlord Destiny already just a little bit behind. 100 resources lost there, of course. Now it's time for the extractors. Destiny getting extractors at both the main and the natural, continuing to produce queens. Is this going to be his third set? Yes, it is. Uh, this is going to place him with six queens in play once those 
both pop, and there you go. Six queens now in play. That's going to be the bulk of his defense. A couple of extractors formulating a wall off up here. Wants to make sure that he's going to be uh, A-OK -okay against any possible Hellion run buys. And speaking of Hellions, that is exactly what we have over here. Now, I do wonder if Destiny scouted that out with his Overlord Scout. No, he didn't make it in far enough. I uh, was just able to get enough vision up until this point. So it doesn't know that they're coming, but yeah, that's a reasonable guess, especially with Mech getting improvements with the Heart of the Swarm beta. Uh, you can probably expect it. Now these Hellions here, this is the first thing we're going to make mention of. Hellions now tra transform into battle mode, or uh, battle Hellions, or something like that. <laughs> and basically, this turns them into fire bats. That's what I'm just going to call them forever and ever. Uh, battle mode, which is innately available to these Hellions, uh, you can just hit D and they turn into fire bats, essentially. They're much slower, but they're a lot more durable, and they still do that, that splash damage like the Hellion does. Uh, they do a little bit of a wave, though. You'll see how it actually works works once they get into combat if he does switch them uh, from hellions into battle mode we'll have to see if he decides to do that or not Double armor is coming out for Columbus. This is going to tell us that he will be going mech play. That is going to be his main focus here in this match. We've got Destiny moving out with a few queens. It's going to be spreading that creep like crazy here. Hellions trying to do what they can to delay or deny that. Actually forces the cancel of those tumors over there. Uh, they did recede back to that point. And look at that. I love the new animation as the tumors move out into their newly placed position. Let's take a look here. Destiny's got an Overlord Scout getting ready to push on up for some sacrificial scouting. Is he going straight forward right now? Looks like he is. All right, so we've got those Hellions in play here for Columbus. He is also now coming out, starting to make that transition into the Warhound. The anti-vehicle mech uh, Haywire missiles do bonus damage to mechanical units. So interesting that he's getting it in this matchup. You know, the Warhound is strong regardless. It is the most strong, though, against Protoss and against Terran players who are playing mech because this is an anti-mech unit. Uh, moving in with his Sacrificial Overlord, he's going to scout the mech-style play. He spotted the double armies as well as those three factories. So now he knows precisely what Columbus is going for here. And as mentioned prior, Columbus, after saturating that main in the natural, now moving down into his third. We get some Hellions decided to move out right now. They're going to be met by Zerglings. Destiny also is in there with a bunch of queens and continuing to spread that creep there. Gotta love it. What's Destiny doing? He's got those 1-1 one -one upgrades just about to finish. He's also got another hatch building right over here as he's taking that center expansion. Uh, besides that, also getting some Overlord upgrades here. Gotta love that. I uh, just got the Overlord speed upgrade. It hasn't gotten the Ventral Sacks, though, but now those Overlords are a bit faster, so he can fan out with those do some scouting with those a bit more safely until some Vikings come into play. More Battle Hounds coming out over here for Columbus as well as those Hellions. I just got those few Marines from the early uh, onset of the game, but really isn't producing much more besides that. Although he is coming out here. I'll take a look at this. We've got three more factories, and he is coming out with a reactor here on this barracks. I wonder if that's going to be for a hot swap or if he does want to continue to make some continue to make some marines now the real danger with his current build here you take a look he's sitting with hellions and these uh warhounds right here the real danger with this is the fact that there's no anti-air except for the few marines that he has he's got no way of dealing with air so if we saw a heavy switch into mutilus here from destiny he'd be very strong until we got some thors in play uh, but still no thors yet just those just those hellions as well as of course the warhounds all right, now let me take a look here at the Warhounds. Let me just show you really quickly. Destiny, it looks, it looks to just be going roaches right now. Uh, Roach and Speed Lane, plus he's got all those queens that he's sitting with. Finally starting to see some Thors over here from Columbus. Let's take a look, though, at the Warhound. Uh, the Warhound, again, is that anti-mechanical unit. He's got these Haywire missiles. When attacking a mechanical unit, the Warhound launches electronically charged missiles at its target, doing 30 damage per volley. So these are specifically for mech units. Again, that is going to do well against a Terran player going for mech or a Protoss opponent who just innately has a lot of mechanical units. Gonna pull back here right now. Columbus a little bit uh, worried with those Hellions about engaging those Roaches, and rightfully so. We get a few Widow Mines, which is another one of the new units in the Heart of the Swarm expansion here for Terran players. Unfortunately enough, though, Destiny sticking very standard play here with this Roach Speedling. He is not going for any Heart of the Swarm units, at least not as of this moment. We'll see if he decides to eventually. Is already up into Hive Tech as well. A very passive game so far between both these players. And again, the thing is, the thing with these Warhounds is they still obviously do, do damage, but once more, I'll say it probably for the fourth or fifth time, they're most effective against mechanical units, which isn't going to do him much good against Destiny, the, who lacks mechanical units, you know what I mean? So that extra volley attack that the Warhounds would do against mech units isn't going to come into play here in this matchup. 
That's why I'm a bit surprised that he's really gotten so many. But you know what? This is the beta, and players should be trying to uh, test out and play with the new units. But at the same time, if it doesn't make sense in the matchup, what are you doing? You know? That's just my opinion, though. I'm still new to this like everyone else, and uh, we'll have to see how things change over time. Maybe for some odd reason, uh, the Warhound will be a staple in TVZ, but I doubt it. And finally here, we're going to be seeing some new units from good old Destiny coming out with the Viper now. We'll take a look at that as soon as that pops into play. And at least Widow Mines, I'll take a look at that really quickly for you. Uh, they basically explode to do damage. Mines detonate, dealing 160 damage to its primary target. Units caught within the blast radius take 35 splash damage from its unstable payload. So the Widow Mine does have a little bit of splash damage there, making it a little bit effective, but does most of its damage to its primary target. We got a few Hellions now moving out here for Columbus uh, with that blue flame, blue flame upgrade. Going to do very well against those Zerglings. You can see Destiny actually pushing back there. Doesn't want to get into that battle, at least not as of this moment. Hellion's going to continue to push and actually trying to sneak by and do some economic damage here, and here he goes, moving up right behind that resource line. Going to start hitting some of these workers. Unfortunately, not target firing them down, going for the Queen instead. That's something you need to really focus on and making sure those Hellions are directly targeting some workers and the Roaches come up to meet that and say that's enough of those shenanigans. <laughs> take them out very, very quickly. Let's take a look though. How many workers was he able to kill? Got six workers total, so not that bad of an engagement, not the greatest either. Destiny now coming out with an expansion right here at the high yield in the center of the map. And once he gets this up and running, that is going to be a big problem for Columbus as he's going to really start to fall behind economically. Speaking of uh, the economy, let's take a look at the resource gathering right now. Columbus does have a slight lead. Gas going slightly to Destiny, kind of teetering back and forth between the two. It looks like we might be seeing a push here from Columbus, though. Let's take a look. Is he going to commit right now? Yeah, he's making his way across. All right, so here we go. We've got those Hellions in battle mode right now, plus the Warhounds. And the Thors. Let's see what takes place here. It's going to be a pretty big engagement. Lots of Vipers now. Vipers going to start pulling those. Oh gosh, high priority units getting pulled right into the mix of the Roaches, allowing them to tar target fire them very, very quickly. Vipers run out of energy. They're going to be forced back right now. Roaches very strong in this position. And look at this now. Vipers are actually consuming this building, and the way, what they do with that is by consuming the building, by taking uh, HP away from it, they gain some of their energy back. It's a pretty interesting ability there for the Viper. We'll take a look at detail. We'll take a look in detail at the Viper in just one moment, though. First, let's uh, watch these Roaches as they move forward on these Thors. They're going to be target firing them down very quickly here. Destiny doing quite a bit of damage. I want to take a quick look here, make sure I'm not missing any run buys. No, everything is looking good. Roach is continuing to take down Columbus's army. Let's take a look at the army size right now. Columbus sitting with 38 supplies, opposed to the 89 of Destiny. And Destiny's got a strong, in a strong position right now. It's coming out with a lot of roaches here as well. I'm going to continue to pump those out. I'm going to take a quick look at the Viper in just a moment because I do want to show you what that unit is all about. All right, so the Viper here has got a few abilities. He's got the ability to consume friendly structures. Uh, converting life into energy is basically how that works. Second ability, Abduct, pulls target units to the location of the Viper, and that's what we saw in that big engagement there, as he was able to abduct some of the high-priority units of Columbus, pull them right underneath the Roaches, and he's con continuing to consume his, own, consume his own buildings to gain some of his energy back. Last ability here is Blinding Cloud, creates a cloud for 10 seconds that reduces attack range of biological units under it into melee range. Now what this basically does is it turns those uh, ranged biological units, for example the Marine, turns it into only being able to do melee damage and that makes it so they don't get that extra range of damage on uh, encroaching units like roaches or, or like zerglings, whatever is trying to go up into that cloud. So it's a pretty interesting ability as well. And uh, Destiny is going to continue to utilize these Vipers here. It looks like he's getting ready for another push. Now we do have a Hellion, uh, Hellion run by plan. The Vipers continue to pull some of these high priority units back. Ah, uh, this is hurting Columbus. He's just losing these units. He's a little bit too close to those Vipers, taking losses as a result. Uh, Hellion's over here looking for a hopeful expansion where he could take out some workers, but there's nothing over here at the moment. Uh, so hopefully those Vipers actually go into a position where they're going to be useful. Columbus continuing to come out here with these Warhounds. I would really like him to kind of stop making those, focus on tanks, Hellions, and Thors. And, you know, I know that that's standard, you know, standard uh, standard unit composition anyways, but Base. just because it's a beta, he should be trying out units, but he needs to do stuff that's also effective uh, because, again, the Warhounds, I don't see them being that effective in this matchup, at least, you know, from preliminary uh, viewing there. They just, I don't see how that's really going to be an effective unit in this matchup. 
It could be, though. There could be something that I'm missing, but it's a heavy anti-mechanical focus, and the fact that this ability is completely focused on mechanical units seems like it's kind of a waste here in this matchup. Let's take another look at the units lost here. Uh, workers killed 18, so Columbus continues to try to whittle down Destiny's worker count. Uh, Destiny here at the center of the map again with his Vipers. Few Corruptors in the mix as well to counteract any Vikings that may try to take out the take out the Vipers. Speaking of Vikings, there they are. Columbus trying to hold the line here. We still see those Vipers continuously pulling these Warhounds back to the range of the Roaches. Hellions now moving down. Hellions do very poorly against the Roaches. We do have a few Widow Mines. Widow Mines explode, doing some nice damage there. Wow. That, uh, that hurt Destiny a bit, but I still think he's got enough to overwhelm Columbus at this point. Yeah, look at that. Definitely able to overwhelm Columbus over there. That is a very, very impressive play by Destiny. Just so roach heavy. So many more roaches coming out. I really think Columbus's biggest problem here this game was the fact that he put so much of a focus on these Warhounds, which could have been tanks, which would have helped a lot more against the roaches. You know, going tank Hellion Thor and using those uh, Hellions and turning them into the battle mode could definitely help him hold the line a little bit more. A lot more durable than the regular old Hellions out of battle mode. These roaches are really doing a lot of work over here. This is <laughs> not looking too good right now for Columbus. Roaches forced the lift off Columbus. Let's take a look at his economy. Not so hot. We got these high yield expansion up and running over here in the center of the map for Destiny. And the roaches continue to stream out more and more corruptors in production as well. Let's take a look at those upgrades. 2-2 two, two upgrades over there. Uh, we got 3-3 three, three upgrades for this mech. But again, it's the Warhound. Columbus shouldn't be building those Warhounds. I know I'm super repetitive in this game, but it's just killing me to see him continuously focus on this when it doesn't really make sense in the matchup. And that's going to do it, guys, for this game here between Destiny and Columbus. My first ever Heart of the Swarm beta expansion commentary. Really excited to get some more of these out to you. And, uh, yeah, let's wrap it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this game here between Columbus and Destiny. Really excited once again to be doing some Heart of the Swarm beta commentary. Also looking forward to the expansion officially going live at some point, hopefully this year or early next year. We'll see when uh, Blizzard decides to actually do it. Uh, you know, these new units are pretty interesting. Definitely going to change the game a bit. Uh, this matchup I don't think is changing too, too much for Terran, except for the fact that they've got the battle mode for the Hellions. Uh, you know, and also those those mines, the Widow Mines, should come into play and be pretty interesting as well. And I do apologize also if I missed anything in this commentary. You know, I'm really just trying to focus on introducing some of the new units and showing off what they do. So I may have missed a couple of engagements as a result. Not sure, though. Anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. Stay tuned in the future for more Heart of the Swarm beta commentary. And if you like the content, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep watching and keep owning.